this discussion, we will discuss the discussion question of Describe the characteristics of a corporation. If we see a discussion question or essay question such as this, we can define a corporation and when doing so, we want to keep in mind other types of entities. What's the difference between a corporation, other types of entities such as a sole proprietorship or partnership? That can give us an idea by comparison of what a corporation is in comparison to other types of entities. So clearly a corporation has similarities as well to other types of, of entities. It is a form of business, uh, a form of business, a business type. Its objective will be to generate revenue, just like any other type of business type. But of course, we're gonna focus in on those things that differ typically when discussing a corporation. And I think the main thing is differing from a corporation to other types of entities as it being a separate legal entity. Most of the other things that we think about uh, of differences in a corporation, advantage and disadvantages to a corporation stem from the fact that it is a separate legal entity. That's kind of like the invention of a corporation that really opened the door for a lot of innovation within business, this idea of a separate legal entity. So what does that mean? It means that we're gonna give actual rights and privileges to a corporation which typically we had not given to anybody but individuals before. So it's almost like the corporation has characteristics given to it by the law uh, as a person in some ways. And, and some of those include the characteristic to own property and the characteristic of being responsible in terms of uh, liability for those property. Why is that such a big benefit? Uh, it's gonna be a huge benefit because if the corporation is thought of as a separate person and it gets sued, then uh, the corporation then is gonna be liable, but not necessarily the owners in the form of shareholders. That's different from a, from a sole proprietorship or a partnership, a general partnership, where we always keep the books separate. Remember that we always keep the books separate, but in terms of a separate entity, they're not a separate entity for a sole proprietorship or a partnership, a general partnership. And therefore, if the partnership or sole proprietor is sued, they, the, the lawsuit can go after not just the, the uh, business assets, but personal, after a personal home or something like that. The corporation allows us not to, to have that, the shareholders are not uh, should have some shield, a corporate shield, and liability protection through their, their personal assets. Huge benefit because it really allows more investment. So the corporate type of entity, because of that, has a benefit of capital investment from people, like even normal people, like, our, uh, like myself, if I wanted to put money into a corporation, I can put it into a mutual fund even, and put money into a corporation without knowing too much about it, because uh, if the corporation loses money, then it should only lose the money that I invested in it. It shouldn't uh, be exposing anything else to me to lose it. I shouldn't have to lose any of my personal assets like a home or something like that through the investment in the corporation. Therefore, the corporation through the issuance of stock can typically generate more capital. That's gonna be one huge benefit of the corporate form of entity. One of the disadvantages of a corporate form of entity is that because it is a separate legal entity, it also has to pay taxes on the corporate level, unlike a sole proprietorship or partnership. And the reason that's typically thought of as a disadvantage is because the, the thing that a corporation cannot do, like an individual or a, um, like a, a sole proprietor or a partnership, is really just give the money that they've earned. Obviously the business is gonna earn money and then give it to the owner in some way. Uh, unlike like an individual, the corporation has individual rights. It can't just give money to the owners. Uh, as, so it can earn money, it has expenses, but it can't just give money to, to the owners because there could typically be a tax effect on that. So in other words, when uh, a partnership gives money to the owner, it's called a draw and it's tax free. When a corporation gives money to the owner, it's called a dividend, which is typically taxed. And that means that the tax happened on the corporate level when it earned the revenue. And then when that revenue is then taken out of the corporation and given to the owners, it's typically taxed again on the individual level in terms of dividends. So that's gonna be one of the major drawbacks of a corporate type of entity. And again, it kind of stems from this idea that it is a separate legal entity and therefore pays tax on the corporate level.
The owners of the corporation are going to be stockholders, so the stockholders are going to be the owners of the corporation. There's really pros and cons to that form of ownership as well. The, the great thing about the stocks is that they're all standardized. So unlike a partnership where we have to keep track of each individual capital account for each individual partner, the corporation, we're just going to say, hey, all the stocks are the same. They're all common stocks. They're like tokens. They're like money. They're almost like currency. They're all the same. How do we differentiate one partner or one owner, not a partner, one stockholder from another? One owns more of these tokens. They own more of the stock. So that really standardizes things. And from uh, a tracking standpoint for the financial statements, we just have to basically know the number of stocks that are out there and the price of those stocks for reporting the financial statements. We don't have to list, in other words, any individual owner. The other great benefit to that is that the owners of the stock then can easily trade the stock because they're all standardized. They're all the same. Unlike a partnership, where if we wanted to sell the partner or buy into a partnership, it's a much more difficult type of transaction because it's all a unique transaction that we'll have to figure out. Whereas the, the standardization of the corporate stock allows us to really uh, be able to trade more easily and to be able oftentimes to judge what the market price is through the trading process. Another advantage of a corporation is going to be that it can live past uh, just like the life of the owners, unlike a partnership or a corporate or a sole proprietor, which uh, at the point in time when, when the ownership changes, what happens is the sole proprietorship basically goes down or the partnership basically is, is closed and then reopened if the partnership wants to continue at that point. But the corporation, because it's a separate legal entity, is, is going to live beyond uh, any one individual because it's the stockholders that own it and the stock, hold, the stock can always be transferred to another owner. The, the corporation is separate from the owners. It's a separate legal entity. So if you trade stocks or if a stockholder uh, dies or something like that, the corporation does not. It continues on. And then theoretically, of course, a corporation which isn't physical, <laughs> doesn't die, could have continued life for uh, forever, theoretically, into the future. Um, one of the disadvantages, well, one more advantage is going to be that there's not that kind of agency problem that we see in a partnership type of organization. In other words, uh, the partners, if we have two partners that are directly involved in the partnership, any of the partners that are involved um, can then uh, have agreements with themselves and they can bind the partnership into uh, those types of agreements which binds the other partners. So the partners themselves are acting as agents of the partnership, which binds the other partners in any agreement. The corporation doesn't have quite that same problem. It's got different kind of problems, meaning the because the stockholders are a step removed, the stockholders really vote for the board of directors. The board of directors then are the ones that are going to hire management. So the board of directors then is, is hired management. And therefore, the management should be uh, there in order to act on behalf of the stockholders. But you don't have the same kind of agency problem with the, with the, uh, the owners making direct decisions in that case. If, if uh, in this case, where if you have a large corporation where the uh, stockholders are voting for the board of directors who are then uh, hiring management. Now, you do still have some kind of agency problems, whereas management uh, although they should be acting on behalf of the stockholders, have different incentives to themselves. Obviously, they have personal incentives and there still could be agency problems as the management makes decisions uh, that, you know, they have incentive to benefit themselves, possibly not benefiting the stockholders ultimately, and the, and the choice can still get distorted. So that's one of the cons of a corporation. One other con of the corporation is also that it's just it's more expensive. There's more regulations to a corporation because it's a separate legal entity. You have to set up the corporation and you have to do more reporting and tracking on the, the corporation, including things like uh, filing taxes uh, on a yearly basis and, and recording the taxes uh, for the corporate legal entity.